Have you ever sensed that there's something more to health than what meets the eye? That beyond the physical realm lies this energetic realm just waiting to be explored? And have you wondered, well, how can I tap into that in order to benefit my own health and my own life? Well, I felt that same way. I've had that same calling. And in this video, I want to share the path that I've uncovered, that I've co-created with the clients that I work with, which I call the quantum health shift. A seven-stage journey to elevate your energy and heal in harmony with new earth. So if that resonates with you, I invite you to stick around and dive into this together. So my name is Dr. Candice Esposito, if you don't know me, and I've been doing this work for over 18 years as a licensed naturopathic doctor and functional medicine doctor. And it's been more recently that I've also been certified in bioenergetics and started to bring in metaphysical healing into my practice. And so in this video, I wanted to share this journey that I've embarked on personally and the approach that I now use with clients that we call the quantum health shift. So I see it as this alchemical adventure. It's a metamorphosis in a lot of ways uh, that we can travel along to elevate our energy and align with Earth's own evolution towards what is often called new Earth. So I see it as a spiral path. It's not linear by any means. It's very dynamic, almost as an upward spiral. Um, I think of it as a crystal spiral because it always co connects back to source and source meaning God, right? Divine connect. So we're going to look at how elevating your vibration can lead to profound healing and how your personal growth actually mirrors and contributes to the expansion of collective consciousness. Heal thyself. So one of the things that um, I did after I got my naturopathic um, certification, my degree, was take an oath. It's similar to the Hippocratic oath that conventional medical doctors will take. And part of that is physician heal thyself. I think this applies to everyone, every single human being on this planet Earth. Heal thyself. I really see that as being the most revolutionary act you can take. Not only to heal yourself, but to heal the world. People ask all the time, well, what can I do? There's so much suffering and pain and hardship going on in other parts of the world. This to me is the most revolutionary act you can take. Yes, I mean, there's donations, uh, money donations, sending food, clothing, etc. And that's all needed. But just imagine if each one of us were to heal our own corner of the world our little corner of the world, what a ripple effect that would have. So what we're talking about is helping to heal ourselves and then in turn the world and help to expand uh, collective consciousness. So if you're ready to unlock these higher frequencies and step into this new paradigm for health and existence, let's dive in. I'll just preface this by saying that each stage builds upon the last and at the same time, all the stages are interconnected. So you may complete one stage and you'll likely return back to it and complete it again and again while undertaking other stages at the same time. And that will become more apparent as we go through the stages. I also want to preface this by saying that this is a broad overview of the quantum health shift. So this is the work that we do um, with clients inside of the Health Creators Collective. If this type of a approach. Um, if this framework appeals to you, if it resonates with you, I invite you to hop on a call with me. We can have a one-on-one -on -one chat. It's free, uh, no obligation. And we can figure out if this type of work and in joining the, creator, the Health Creators Collective could be something beneficial to you. So the first stage is what I've called observation. And you'll see that each stage has um, an element from quantum physics, quantum biology, okay? So we start with observation, which has this big theme of collapsing limiting beliefs. It's very much a letting go process as the first step. So in quantum physics, the act of observing can collapse a particle's multiple potential states into a single reality. It's what's called the observer effect. Similarly, we can start with observing our own thoughts and beliefs. So how can we apply that principle in our own lives? Well, we have the power to collapse 
limiting patterns of beliefs and fear-based motivations that no longer serve us, right? So this is a way that we can let go for good of a fear-based operating system that we might be coming to our life with. And that's the energy that we're approaching life with as well. So what could be the practical application of undertaking this first step of observation? I would propose the act of journaling. Okay, we have some specifics here that you can you can follow along with. When you want to identify moments of significant change, moments of change in your own life that were driven by fear or desperation. So, you know, pen and paper uh, in hand, you know, just make this very tangible for yourself rather than typing it out, just write this out. And write down any moments of change. They're going to be obvious points in your life when you look back oh yeah, that changed the trajectory of my life or that caused me to take this action, okay? So some really simple examples through you know the lens of health could be something like starting a restrictive diet or maybe engaging in over-exercising as a result of uh, a health scare, right? So symptoms come up, maybe you have um, a mild heart attack and that's the impetus for you for changing uh, your lifestyle or your diet. Right? So it's coming at it from a place of fear. I'm afraid to die, therefore I am going to undertake these actions. And then you want to look at this without judgment, without self-blame, without shame. We're just bringing awareness to this. We're just saying, okay, this is how it played out. This is what happened. So acknowledge these moments without any judgment or blame. And then you recognize that while fear very well got you through that time in your life, got you through, help you survive, it's not a sustainable or holistic fuel to go forward with. It's not serving you in this moment. It's not serving your growth or your health for that matter. Okay, so that's step two. And then the third part to this kind of practical application is to question those past decisions to determine if they were indeed made out of faith or fear. And when you do this, you want to look at all aspects of your life. So it may seem like it's specific to one aspect, like your health, your work, your relationships, your family life. But I can tell you that more than likely, it will have spilled over into all aspects of your life. And so basically you want to examine and bring awareness to the impact this fear-based decision, right? This moment of change and the decision you took, uh, the actions that you took after that had on other aspects of your life. So an example of this, um, again, through the lens of health could be these limiting beliefs that you've held on to. I'll always be sick. I can't change my health. I have to live like this, okay? And then the fourth step is to express gratitude. So by bringing awareness, you come to it from a place of acceptance. This is what is, this is what happened. But see how that was based in fear and then bring gratitude to those moments of change and move on, and move on. So be thankful for past experiences and recognize that the same fear-based operating system that got you through those times no longer serves you. It no longer serves your growth in the here and now, in this moment. Okay, so that's a practical application. And really what we're doing here is by utilizing the skill of observation, by embodying the place of the observer, the witness, that part of you that can see your thoughts, that can see your feelings, that can see what's happening. Um, by tapping into that part of yourself, you're then in the position to be able to let go of the fear-based operating system and all the associated limiting beliefs and stories that go along with that fear-based operating system. Okay, and so hopefully at this point, you're understanding why this step, the stage needs to come first. Okay, if you don't do this first, there's a strong likelihood you enter into those next stages with the same fear-based operating system and it's gonna contaminate, so to speak, all the future actions that you take. Now you can also probably get a sense of why I said uh, as part of the preface, this needs to be done on an ongoing basis. So like bringing awareness each day 
as, you know, potentially fear-based thoughts arise or fear-based emotions. We bring an awareness to those moments on a daily basis. A little exercise that I undertake to ensure that things aren't piling up or accumulating is at the end of my day, prior to falling asleep, I'll do a review of my day and ask, well, where is there um, forgiveness needed? Where can I apply forgiveness? And often it's forgiving myself, but that's my way of not allowing these things to accumulate to ensuring that I'm not reverting back to this fear-based operating system, okay? Um, Because like I said, otherwise, then your future actions, your future thoughts, et cetera, are going to come from that energy, from that fear-based operating system. So for stage one, if we do a, a quick summary here, the key principle that we're utilizing is that of the observer effect. The key skills are um, observation slash awareness. So tapping into that state of being the observer, the witness. And then as kind of um, a, a natural expansion of that letting go, right? From that place, from that stance of the observer, we then have the ability, the capacity to let go of that fear-based operating system. And the outcome after completing this stage is that you've changed that operating system. You operate from a place of love, love and above all those higher vibrations rather than operating out of fear or that lower vibration uh, operating system. So you've entered into a higher frequency operating system and from there, you're now creating the opportunity for healing to take place. So as long as you're um, utilizing an energy from this fear-based operating system, it blocks energy, sorry, it blocks healing from taking place, okay? So that's the first step, observation. The second stage is called superposition. So the big theme here is embracing infinite possibility. In the quantum world, particles exist in all possible states simultaneously until they are observed. This is called superposition. This principle teaches us that we too hold infinite possibilities within us. So at this stage, you want to imagine, you want to visualize yourself as a being of limitless possibilities and potential. Because the truth is you are. You are infinitely valuable. Your body is inherently valuable and capable of immense healing. Immense healing. Every cell in your body is literally designed to support your well-being. Your body is always acting for you, given the circumstances, the context in which it finds itself, okay? So in this stage, we really recognize and are grateful for our body's inherent value and know, and know down to our core that health is accessible. It is abundant, regardless of what you've been told. Health is not scarce. Health is not unattainable. You don't have to buy into uh, a label that you've been given, what we call a diagnosis. You don't have to buy into that as your fate or that you're fated to family history because, you know, a certain condition has been very prevalent in your family history. Okay, none of that is true. Health is accessible. Health is abundant. So we want to shift, really embody this abundance mindset. And then from that place, from there, then you can define what optimal health means for you, free from the limitations imposed by past experiences or societal expectations, okay? So superposition, tapping into limitless possibility. And the practical application of this is utilizing visualization and affirmations. So a simple affirmation could be something like, I am healing, or I am healthy, I am vibrant, I am vital, right? You don't have to make it complicated. Uh, I have offered you two supportive resources that I'll link to in the description below this video, and um, you'll have access to them through these notes as well. So one is called the envisioning technique, and I've created a video to walk you through that process. It's something that I recommend doing quarterly, annually. So you do it on a, a semi-regular basis. And then um, something that I call the feel yourself well visualization. And that would be something that you, you would uh, use more daily, right? To kind of keep this going and maintain this stage. So the envisioning technique, feel yourself well. I recommend checking out those two resources. 
So the key principle in the stage of superposition is that superposition from the quantum health world. And the key skill that we're um, utilizing is living in the wish of thought. Uh, Neville Goddard used to use that term, and it just means the sense of we've envisioned um, this reality for ourselves and we are stepping into it. We're assuming that it, it is done and we are living from that place. So sometimes I call this visionary embodiment. We have this vision of ourselves, we're stepping into that vision and we're living from that place. And then the outcome really is a sense of self-empowerment. You've taken back control of your health, right? You're embracing your intrinsic worth and your capacity for healing. There's limitless potential, limitless possibilities within that place. Moving on to stage three, which is entanglement. So you've probably heard of quantum entanglement. The big theme here is connecting with higher energies. So quantum entanglement shows that particles can be interconnected regardless of how far apart they are, regardless of distance. What affects one instantly affects the other. So once they've come in contact with each other, interacted in some way, they are forever entangled. So this reflects how we intrinsically are connected to others and to the universe. All is one. So surrounding ourselves with positive energies, people, environments, thoughts can positively impact our well-being. So this step is about being very intentional about what we're choosing to become entangled with or by. Okay. So the practical application is intentional entanglement. So in stage two, so what we called superposition, it was a lot more inner work that was being done, right? Stepping into our intrinsic value, really feeling that, really knowing that to our core. And now in this stage, we want to set up our external environment, our external world to be a mirror reflection of that intrinsic worth, that intrinsic value, and to support our healing process going forward. So we want to ensure that our outer world is in alignment with our inner world. The external world needs to be a reflection of this new operating system, not our old fear-based operating system. Otherwise, that's going to become a block uh, to our healing, slow our, slow our progress down. So some things to consider in this stage. It could look like Maybe looking at some like old clothes that you have that are laden with these heavy memories, right? Maybe you have an as association with this piece of clothing to a uh, bad memory or to a time in your life where you know that was associated with this moment of change that was based in fear. It could look like music playlists, right? Music has um, this magical way of taking us back to a, a memory instantaneously. But what if those memories of those associations, again, are linked to that fear-based operating system? Vices. Now, you probably don't need me to tell you what those look like. It could be anything from drinking to overeating, drugs, smoking, porn, gambling, what have you. You don't need me to tell you what your vices are. Again, is it based in this fear-based operating system? Okay, is it serving you? Is it serving your higher growth? If there are vices, you know, the definition of a vice is it, it, it is probably not. Um, media content, this is a huge one. You know, every piece of social media that we're looking at, that we're listening to, we're becoming entangled with, right? So what's the energy of that media that you're exposing yourself to? Uh, again, is it more... Uh, energy that's similar to the fear-based operating system versus this new operating system of, uh, you know, vibrating at love and above that you want to take on. And then the people in our lives, friends and family, the people that we surround ourselves with, how do we feel when we're around these people? Are they lifting us up? Are they supporting us? Do we feel good when we're around them? Or do we feel low and heavy? And again, are we in this relationship out of fear? Or because that relationship was created, it um, happened during that time of uh, that moment of change or that fear-based operating system was created as well. So when considering all of the above components of your external world, you want to ask yourself, did this thing or this person come into my life out of fear or due to because of my old fear-based operating system? 
Like if I was in embodying this new system of love and above, would I still be choosing that thing? Would I still be choosing that person to be in my life? Okay. How do I feel when I engage with this thing or when I interact with this person? Like I said, use the, the heavy and light barometer. Do I feel light and happy or do I feel low and heavy when I'm you know, have this piece of clothing on when I'm listening to this music, when I'm around this person. And does this thing have the same energy as the fear-based operating system? Is it vibrating at any of those lower frequencies? Shame, guilt, resentment, blame, etc. Right? Is that the association it has for you? Okay. And so I think you get the idea. If this thing or person is associated with your old fear-based operating system, you may wish to ask yourself, am I willing to let this go? Or am I willing to perhaps spend less time around this person or not put so much effort or energy or time into this relationship? Okay. And then once you've done that, Once you've done the first phase, so to speak, of letting go, then you can start to introduce new inputs, behaviors, uses of time, people, communities that align, that resonate with this new operating system. And that could look like maybe buying a new piece of clothing, right, that represents that to you. Building a new playlist, a music playlist of music that lifts you up. Introducing a new habit new content that you're exposing yourself to, spending more time around people who lift you up that you feel good around, maybe redesigning your workspace to again support this new operating system. So the key principle of this stage that we're tapping into is that of quantum entanglement. The key skill I would say is one of discernment, discerning what is uh, in highest service to me What is not, you know, what is it that I love? What is it that I despise or no longer serves me? And from there, am I willing to let that go? And then the outcome being that you feel supported, you feel safe, you feel at ease within this outer world, within this environment. And you know that that's the case because it's reflecting, it's mirroring your inner world and your new operating system. So at this stage, after these four steps or four, the initial three stages, um, you've set the foundation for this new reality to be brought into um, your life for the quantum breakthrough to happen. The fourth stage is called coherence. Um, and the big theme here is aligning one's mind, body, and spirit. So in quantum physics, coherence refers to waves that are in sync. They amplify each other's effects. Now, when our mind, body, and spirit are aligned, an amplification of health can happen. So we experience a harmonious state that enhances our health and our intuition and our energetic um, energy field as well. Now, I created a whole video about this stage, specifically what I call the coherence theory of authenticity. So I encourage you to check out that video. Again, I've linked to it in the notes. I'll link to it in the description below this video. I encourage you to check that out for more details about how to undertake this stage of coherence. Um, The practical application, I just wanted to kind of put a couple caveats here. So this is really about health literacy. Um, health in terms of mind, body, and spirit. It's all interconnected, right? You can't work on your physical health and not impact your mental health, emotional health, spiritual health, and, and vice versa. Now, all the stages within the quantum health shift are personalized and unique specific to you. In stage four, coherence, the specific action steps that you're going to undertake are going to be customized to the context of your health. Okay, so gave some examples here. So one person may need to prioritize regulating his or her nervous system one when it comes to um, aligning your body, right? The physical health. Another person, though, may need to prioritize removing toxins from their body. Another person may need to prioritize his or her gut health, right? So it's going to vary depending on the person and the context of his or her health. That's really important. So one of the reasons that I don't go into specific details about you should do this and then you should do that is that it's not going to be in service to you. 
There's so many protocols, um, templates that are put out by health gurus and health influencers. Uh, it's one of my pet peeves in the online media, in the online health space because it's not in service. It ign- it ignores and negates the context of your unique um, health context. And context is everything. So you know, I don't want to give you a protocol. It's it's not going to be in service to you. The best roadmap to aligning your mind, body, and spirit is one that is bespoke specifically for you and your contacts. And again, that's the work that I do with clients inside of the Health Creators Collective. Another thing that I want to point out here under the stage is that simplicity is key. So complexity attempts. It attempts to soothe pain, but it's just an attempt. And our intellect, our ego, it loves complexity right? They just eat it up. But simplicity is what truly addresses discomfort and um, really addresses root causes, okay? Simplicity supports root cause resolution, not complexity. So I encourage you to be aware of any complex health protocols that you see out there where they have all these bunch of steps and it just feels overwhelming to even look at it. You want to focus on foundational principles, principles that yes they're applied to your health it's within a health context but there's universal objective truth and goodness to these principles okay these are what's going to offer significant benefits without the overwhelming effort okay and what i would say goes along with that too is just challenging this really common belief that healing has to take a lot of effort or that healing has to take a lot of time or that healing has to take a lot of work. What if it doesn't, right? A lot of times I've seen, I've witnessed this on calls with clients that healing can happen in a moment, but just an awareness, awareness in that moment can bring about healing. Okay. So healing doesn't necessarily have to take a lot of time and effort um, or work. So um, the quantum principle that we're tapping into at this stage is coherence. The key skill that we're utilizing is that of contextualization. Context is key. Do not ignite or um, negate or ignore the context of your health. Um, And then the outcome is this alignment of mind, body, and spirit, which results in an amplification of your health outcomes. I would say even beyond potential exponential um, results. So there's, there's an amplification, limitless possibilities there when you do this. The next stage, stage five, is resonance. So the big theme of resonance is harmonizing with the collective. So if you recall in stage four, coherence, it's really resonance within ourselves, mind, body, and spirit. You can think of resonance, you know, within those um, the various levels of our being and of our health. And in stage five, we're moving towards the collective. So this is about vibrating at a frequency that harmonizes with others, creating a collective amplification of energy. So when we elevate our vibration, we inspire others to do the same. Um, And then together, we can create a powerful resonance that leads to collective healing. You see this take place and you've experienced this. So just think of um, a shared moment of joy or compassion, or if you've ever participated in one of these global meditations, think back to that experience and what you felt. These are all examples of resonance at work. There's research displaying this. Um, You know, look at Lynn Taggart's work around field theory. She taps into resonance in her work where you have these pockets of people, these groups of people undergoing a meditation or a visualization and the amplification of results that happens because of that resonance. So by nurturing kindness, empathy, and love within ourselves, we contribute to this ripple effect out into the world. So the application of this stage of resonance is, is community. You know, a really tangible way of talking about this is community, is the people, the individuals that you surround yourself with, that you resonate with them at the level of heart, at the heart level, really. Your values, your health goals, your new operating system, right? That frequency that you're vibrating at, there's a res- resonance between you 
and these other people that you've surrounded yourself with inside of this community. So yeah, that can look like global meditation groups, local uh, meetups, communities. It can look like, you know, different things. And then I would say too, if this is something that you're interested in uh, implementing in your own life, and perhaps you don't feel like you have this type of community in, in, in your own world right now, come hang out with us on our connection calls. Uh, this is a container, a space in which we connect. Um, I'm kind of the facilitator of the calls. I'll lead them. But it's our community where we come hang out. Uh, yes, we'll go through health questions and troubleshoot. And, but we also celebrate each other's wins. There's a sense of belonging that comes along with that. And that in of itself is very therapeutic. So I'll leave the, the link to uh, RSVP to the connection calls again below this video in the description. So the key principle of this stage is that of resonance. The key skill that we're utilizing is connection, connection with others. Um, and then the ilkam is the sense of belonging, the sense of feeling seen, feeling cared about. We're in an epidemic of loneliness at this current point uh, on planet Earth right now. So this co-regulating, feeling safe with other people, I think is essential to healing. So being in harmony with your health community and thereby amplifying the collective well-being. Stage six is the quantum field. And the big theme here is tapping into universal energy, source, God, whatever term you prefer to use. So this is the underlying field of energy and information that connects all things. By tapping into the quantum field, we access a wellspring of wisdom, creativity, and healing potential. This is source. So how do you connect with this field? I think there's various ways to doing this. There are various ways. The way that I propose that we always have access to, we can drop into in every single moment, in any moment, is that of stillness. Stillness, okay? So it could look like meditation. It could look like spending time in nature. It could look like deep breathing practices, practices that quiet the mind and open the heart. The key is that it's just some practice that allows you to drop down into bliss, into that place of stillness within yourself. When we attune to this universal energy, we align with our true purpose and the greater flow of life. So the practical application of this is going to look like stillness and meditation. Um, and in, you know, the work that I do with clients, one of the rituals that we undertake together is called the quantum breakthrough ritual. I've linked to kind of um, a written outline of how to undertake that ritual yourselves. Um, it is something that we do regularly. So quarterly, annually, every three to six months. Um, we re revisit this ritual. It's very powerful. Um, so I encourage you to check that out when you get to this stage and you're at that you know, point of being ready to implement and, and apply this principle. So the key principle, quantum principle that we're tapping into is that of the quantum field itself. Key skill is self-love. And yeah, I think truth is... Um, is inherent in this one too, connecting with that deeper truth of who you are. And then the outcome is alignment of your personal health mission with a greater purpose, right? Aligning with your soul's calling. And that's really what the quantum breakthrough ritual helps you to do is figure that out. What is my soul's calling? Why am I here? What am I called to do? What does that look like? And then the seventh and final stage is quantum leap. The big theme here is embodiment of higher consciousness. So this one is about making a profound shift to this higher state of consciousness. What I think of is really more of a metamorphosis. So this whole process is a metamorphosis. You're taking on, uh, you're creating, not taking on, you're creating a new reality, stepping into a new reality, what a lot of people call new earth. So this leap isn't necessarily a sudden jump, although it can be. More often it can be a series of incremental shifts 
resulting from the previous stages, the previous practices that we went through. This, I propose, is the stage of mastery. Okay, so again, it's one of these stages that you're going to be going through continuously, ongoing. Okay, because if you think of the masters you know, think of someone that you would um, refer to as a master of his or her craft. The person that you're thinking of probably focus on doing one thing exceptionally well, repeatedly over time in order to achieve that mastery. Okay, so you're probably asking yourself at this point, well, what's my one thing? And I would propose it could, again, it could be anything, but I would propose that it at least include love. Mastery of love. So letting love be the driving force behind all your actions, thoughts, and beliefs. It is the energy, the vibration of love and above. So when I say love and above, it just means love and then all the frequencies that are above, that are even higher than love itself, like peace and authenticity. So it's the energy of love and above that fuels your new operating system. Love is enduring. Love is limitless. It's timeless. And it forms the foundation of true mastery. When you, are in, when you are deeply in touch with love, what I love, how I embody love, it ensures that all your motivations are pure. They can't be anything but pure. When you're coming at it, you're taking that action from that place of love and above. You embody authenticity. And authenticity is the highest vibration. Okay? So it's about recognizing and opening yourself to unconditional love from creator, from source, from God, from the universe, again, whatever term you prefer to use. You allow that, you recognize that, and you embody this energy, letting that guide your decisions, letting that energy guide your actions. Okay. So really, the, the practical application of the final stage here is consistency. You're continuing to travel, continuing to journey through the previous six stages. So in a sense, you're doing, but the stage is much more about being. It's much more about embodiment, okay? Um, you can think of the saying, chop water, and, you know, chop wood and carry water. You know, just the sense of taking consistent action, okay? So you want to ask yourself when you're in this stage, what energy am I meeting my day with? What does that look like? What energy am I bringing to this interaction that I'm having with this individual? What energy am I bringing to this action? Does it doing, right? That's part of my day. What energy does this thought reflect? What energy does this feeling or emotion reflect? And that'll tell you where you're at in terms of that level of mastery. Another good barometer or gauge is our ability to maintain what's often referred to as divine neutrality, right? So when something comes up in your life, are you able to ma maintain um, that state of neutrality and not have this like intense emotional reaction to it, regardless of what that is? So the key principle in this final stage that we're tapping into is that of quantum jumping or quantum leaping. The key skill is divine connection. And the outcome is a new reality, what is often called new earth. Mastery through love and above, consistently choosing actions that reflect love, both for oneself, for others, the collective as a whole. Okay, that's the outline of the seven stages of the quantum health shift. So in summary, we have stage one, which is observation. And here we talked about collapsing that fear-based operating system, bringing awareness to that, observing it for what it is, seeing it for what it is, and letting that go. Stage two is superposition, embracing our intrinsic worth, our intrinsic value, embracing infinite potentials and possibilities. Stage three is that of entanglement, recognizing that whatever we're coming into contact with, that whatever we're exposed to in our life, we become forever entangled with. So why not intentionally entangle, intentionally connect with health-enhancing energies, 
environments, people that are going to lift us. And then stage four is that of coherence. And that's where we're doing more of the health literacy work, right? Of aligning mind, body, and spirit. All of those energetic fields being in alignment, which creates homeostasis, harmony within the body, and a higher amplification of our own health. Okay, so coherence um, is more the inner work, personal work that we're doing. And then resonance is then harmonizing in community. Okay, quantum field, the sixth stage is tapping into universal energy. Okay, that's where that self-love comes in and recognizing the truth of who we are, connecting with universe, creator, God, source, allowing the energy to come through us. And then the seventh and final stage is the quantum leap where you make that your new reality. It's a full embodiment, right? Um, thereby bringing that, creating, co-creating that new earth. So by consistently elevating your vibration, embracing infinite possibilities and aligning with universal energy, you undergo a metamorphosis. It's not just a transformation. This is like the equivalent of the caterpillar into the butterfly. It's a completely new state of being and living. Okay, the, the caterpillar cannot conceive, cannot imagine what that reality of the butterfly is. Okay, so that's what we're talking about here. And as we each individually transform, we contribute to the emergence of new earth a reality rooted in higher unity consciousness and divine love. Unity consciousness and divine love. And this is where personal healing meets collective evolution. It's all connected. It's a mirror. It's a hologram, right? So every, every single seemingly small step you undertake is significant. You're having an impact on changing that hologram not just on your life, right? The impact is not just on you and your healing, absolutely significant, but know that also has an impact on the collective as well. Elevating your energy, as we said, healing thyself is the most revolutionary act you can take. It's the most powerful act of self-love and service to our planet. I firmly believe that. So know that together we can co-create a reality that reflects our highest potentials, i.e. love and above, rather than one that reflects our old fear-based operating systems. The fear-based operating systems are collapsing, they're crumbling. You're seeing that play out in the collective right now as well. So why not tap into this process that Earth is undergoing anyway? right? Why not journey alongside that shift, that tr transformation, that metamorphosis to new earth, healing in harmony with new earth. So if you stuck around this long, thank you very much for joining me on that journey. If you found this uh, valuable, I encourage you to give the video a thumbs up. That helps me get this content out to more people. And so more people can then create that ripple effect in their own lives. I encourage you to share it with anyone, any friends or family who could benefit from the message. And then also consider subscribing to the channel if you want more content around bioenergetics and quantum health. So I'd love to hear, I'd love to hear your thoughts and experiences after watching this video as well. So leave a comment below which of these stages most resonates with you and or which stage are you currently traveling through right now in your life? Which stage do you feel like you're at? So the journey to higher consciousness is ongoing. It absolutely is like ongoing. It's a dynamic journey and we're all in this together. So know too that if you want some help, if you want this community of like-hearted souls to walk alongside, I have a couple of options for you. One is to RSVP to our next connection call. They are free to join. There's no obligation. You can just come hang out, get a sense of if it feels right or not for you. And then the other is if you want to just kind of 
Quantum Leap in a sense, you can uh, click the link in the description below to chat with me personally. And we can talk about uh, potentially working together if that feels like the right fit or not for you as well. So until next time, stay connected, stay elevated and keep shining your light. Till then.